Angus Constam is an expert on what's true and what's not about pirates. The trouble today is unraveling the fact and the fiction of piracy. We've had centuries of pirate myth which have, has interwoven things to such an extent which it's almost impossible to unravel. For instance, walking the plank, pirates never did that. That came from Peter Pan. The whole idea of treasure maps, they didn't do that. That came from Treasure Island. Even the way that pirates talk, the the R gym lads of, that all came from Robert Newton. And stripe him till he falls, and dose him with salt. R, and when he comes to, then let him have it again. We have this vision of pirates dressing in headscarves and big earrings and sash bands. That all came from Howard Pyle, a late 19th century American artist who did pirate illustrations for children's books. Every kid dressing up as a pirate today models themselves on a 19th century artist's idea of what a pirate would look like. At the time, they would dress just like the regular seamen of the day, nothing more, nothing less. One of the few pirate myths that actually has a semblance of reality is the Jolly Roger, the skull and crossbones, these symbols of death. That was designed to make them cower, fear, and not put up any fight whatsoever. So what's the one thing we know for sure is true about pirates? Pirates were pretty nasty people. When they captured a ship, they either killed the crew or held them prisoner, but if there was any sign of resistance, they made it very clear that they would just carve everyone up and throw them overboard. A pirate isn't really a very glamorous thing. He's a rubber who commits his crimes at sea. So there's nothing magical about it. There's nothing romantic about it. It's essentially, he's a, he's a criminal. Man the gun! 